So my name is Charles Whiteley. I'm with ExxonMobil. Uh, I work for an organization within ExxonMobil called ENPS, so Environmental and Property Solutions. Uh, I'm our digital strategy lead and our global smart building strategy and execution lead. So buzzwords, buzzwords are, are rampant right now in the, in the digital space. So the keynote speaker talked a little bit about digital as a transformation journey. ExxonMobil has, has been on that journey for the last couple of years. So mandate passed down from the highest levels within our organization that we really needed to change the way that we approach digital and transformation. So over the last two years, every organization within ExxonMobil has gone through this digital transformation journey where we started it. So from an ENPS perspective, the group that, that I lead up from a digital perspective, uh, we've really focused on a couple things to kick kickstart our digital strategy. So first and foremost is really building that foundation. So access to data, we've got you know, roughly 40 to 50 systems that support our value stream activities across the globe. Uh, we've got a variety of different individual users, personas. So we really wanted to focus on establishing that data foundation and making those foundational investments to really accelerate value capture later down the continuum. The other thing that we focused on from a digital perspective is around uh, user-centered design and design thinking. So I'm sure several of the folks in this room are familiar with IDEO, the school up in Stanford. Uh, from an application and digital front, we've really focused in on defining that end user experience and building technology that not only delivers a product that people will use, but is scalable across our global footprint. So ENPS, Environmental and Property Solutions. So these are the different capabilities that align in our, in our function within ExxonMobil. So we've got our strategy and commercial operations, so master planning, lease negotiations, acquisitions, things of that nature. Our major projects organizations, so they're the guys that actually go out and build stuff. Um, our facilities organization, operations and maintenance, we've got roughly 1,500 technicians and operators around the globe supporting roughly 25 million square feet of corporate real estate. And then our environmental group. So making sure that from a stewardship perspective, we're leaving the ground in a better shape than, than when we got there in some cases, right? So when we think about digital uh, and, and, and we're talking to some of these large consulting companies, some of these technology solution providers, one thing that we re really understand from the get-go was that not all digital investments are created equal. Because we have such a diverse portfolio from a corporate real estate perspective, we have to ensure that we've got multiple ways to capture data to drive the decisions and insight that we need. Um, so from a flagship location perspective, if anyone's had the opportunity to, to visit our spring campus in Houston, it's a very different environment than you know, our, our new site that's going up in Guyana or, or a, an industrial site in Northern Africa or you know, the, new, the, new, um, the new site we're building out in Mozambique. So there's, there's a lot of variation in regards to uh, our portfolio. So we need to make sure that our digital ambition addresses challenges in each of those specific areas. So I talked a lot again about kind of a phased approach to value capture. So you, everyone's hearing buzzwords like machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know, VR, AR, the, these advanced capabilities that really don't happen out the gate. So that's something that we recognized early on is that to enable that value capture, you have to make foundational investments up front and you have to reap those benefits kind of along the continuum. So, so we've pulled together kind of the dependencies required to actually deliver those transformational capabilities. So now I'm gonna switch over to the demo and, and share a little bit of, of the work that we've been doing at ExxonMobil with Esri. So this product, this project came, you know, we started it 2017, end of December. Again, you know, 25 million square feet of corporate real estate, um, a lot of real estate to cover. One of the biggest value propositions that, that our groups provides to the broader ExxonMobil is the ability to manage space, right? So space is very expensive to maintain. Uh, JLL came out with a statistic for every million square feet of real estate, it's roughly $30 million a year in CapEx. So it's in our best interest to really manage the space that we have in the most effective way. So, you know, from a, from a campus perspective, again, flagship location, um, we've got roughly 10,000 residents that sit on the four and a half million square feet of real estate up in, in spring. Uh, we got roughly 1,000 visitors a day. So our existing wayfinding solution was end of life. Uh, so we saw this as an opportunity to make a, a foundational investment up front to provide this ge geospatial layering capability that would deliver an immediate business need, but also set us up for future success. Right, so here's an example of, of the work that we've done. This pilot's getting ready to launch in June. Um, but as we can see here, as we scroll into additional detail, um, there's, there's more detail associated with the maps. 
So it's actually pretty, pretty cool what the team at Esri has been able to do. So as you can see, you know, we're zooming in, and as you zoom in, there's additional layers of detail. Uh, you're able to go in and explore the campus. Uh, we've got this available on the mobile version. We'll show you in a second. But what I'd like to do is, let's say I'm a, I'm a new visitor or I'm, a, I'm an Exxon Mobil employee from another location, and I want to figure out where the Formula One race car is. We do have a couple cars on campus. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, so, uh, you know, so I find that the Formula One car, there's all the details about it. We actually had the Formula One car race around our ring, ring road. We had our Red Bull driver do that a couple years ago. It was pretty sweet. Um, but that being said, you know, I want to go see the race car. I found the race car, and then uh, I want to be able to get directions. So as you can see, it's going to pull up the directions. I have to put in a starting point. That would be helpful. So I work over in the wellness quad. We've got four quads out on the campus. And there we go. So pretty neat. It also works from a, you know, if you want to find a, like a location or, or a meeting. Say I'm, I'm over in wellness three in my quad and I need to be able to go over to energy two you know, so, so these aren't actual real people just for, you know, GDPR, data privacy considerations out there, just calling that out. But, you know, I know that, you know, over by Laura's desk, there's an office space. I can also put in a meeting room and then likewise, right? So, so instant navigation, turn by turn directions. Uh, we're also ADA, you know, compliant. So we've put in all those different, uh, different routes from an ADA perspective. We're also adding indoor based on the you know, beautiful Houston weather sometimes where all it wants to do is rain. So we do have the opportunity to go completely indoors. We're working through that now. But, but really cool stuff. Really, really excited about, about the work here. Um, so now I'm going to switch over to the mobile application and show you some of the, some of the things we've been able to do there as well. Um, so again, think of it from, a, from either a visitor perspective or a resident perspective. One of the challenges that we have on the campus is, is the parking situation. So imagine being able, you know, over voice, uh, directing someone to find the, the nearest parking location and then showing them where that first meeting room is. Uh, one of the other cool things is that we're able to integrate it with key events that are happening on campus. So again, I'm coming in from Aberdeen. I'm, I'm on campus for a week. I, I'm really interested in data and analytics. I want to go to a training program, yada, yada, yada. I could come in here and find an event, pull that event up. I could share it with some of my friends um, via email, text, uh, what have you. I could save the location. And then, of course, I could do the routing. Right, so, so it's really been great to kind of see this product come to life over the last six to eight months. Uh, now, what we're really doing here is, is setting the stage for what could potentially happen to, to enable our, our mobile technician workforce across the globe. So once you've put this, the power of geospatial into someone's hands and we start overlaying work order data, ticket data, you know, we're starting to integrate with some of the work we're doing with smart buildings and IoT, AR and VR. You know, we've got a route for the day, and we know that there's three or four pieces of critical equipment on that path that may be operating in the yellow. You know, why don't we stop there and kind of take a look at those things, check them out, and, you know, make sure that we're, uh, we're supporting our residents. Because for us in our group, it's all about providing the ultimate workplace experience, right? So this is a way that Esri's helping us to, to deliver that value proposition. One last thing that I'll finish on is, is kind of the dashboard space. So this is, this is not live data. This is um, an example of what we're looking to do. Uh, I think from our perspective, again, we capture data in, re in regards to space in so many different ways. So again, we want, we want the data collect, uh, capture platform to, to almost be um, you know, agnostic in a sense that all I really care about is the data. I don't care if I collect it from Wi-Fi. I don't care if I collect it from someone's docking station in regards to space. I don't care if I connect it, collect it from a digital ceiling. I want the data in a standard way that I could deliver insights to my business and, and to my customers. So, so here's an example of what the dashboard could look like. I think after we've kicked off the pilot, we're going to focus more on adoption. I think one of the things that people forget about when they talk about technology and digital is it's really around the management of change, right? And really ensuring that you hit that critical mass to make a platform like this really valuable. So I think the initial metrics are going to focus around adoption, how many people are logging into the platform, what's the critical usage, you know, and then we can start to really be more comfortable to deploy this at scale. So really appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you very much. Uh,